Here we are again with another rally car by CM's, an extinct brand, which is a real shame. I say it all the time, but I really love this brand because I like rally cars. If you've never seen this box before, this collection, I think they call them by SS, like stages. So this is the 15th collection, maybe, and it has to do with Mazdas. So you got these two cars here, so that's 91 Swedish. I think I have that one, actually. This thing here and the other four are over here. Okay, the back is always the same. It says 735 yen, so that's less than eight dollars, I think, in today's money. 164, of course, and yeah, so that's what's going on inside this box. Was uh, this thing? It was screwed to this base, and then on the bottom was a bag with an antenna, and you have to clip it off the sprue, and it's just a friction fit in the die cast. So I don't really keep these things here. Okay, so I went ahead and did all that stuff. It's hard to take photos, uh, find photos of this car because this is a Group A rally racer, not Group B, which is the higher level with the Quattro and the Peugeot 205 and stuff like that. This is uh, a lower grade of racing or less dangerous grade of racing, let's put it that way. So this 323 four-wheel drive, as it's called, uh, debuted in 1986 and uh, raced actively up until 1990. And it didn't do very well in the WRC rankings because it was in a whole different league compared to the Group B racers. So it finished around 11th place, place you know, which makes sense because all the Group B cars would be much faster and power, more powerful. Peugeot won that year, by the way. And, but that doesn't mean this is a bad car. Since that time, you know, a lot of people are racing these cars in historic races. Like, this photograph is so crisp, it has to be a, ret a retro. Meaning, like, it's a historic race. So they're taking this old car and racing it, and who knows, maybe last year for all we know. Uh, but anyways, it's the same car. The actual registration is the same, EXR-949. It's just, this is a much more modern photo, whereas in 1986, I think that's what this photo is. It's so grainy because cameras were garbage back then. All right, well, let's take a look here. Uh, so, yeah, all the racing that has been going on since, this car, this platform, has won 388 races over its lifetime. So that's between 1986 and today, which is still a long, a, a pretty big span of time, but 388 race wins isn't bad. Powered by 1.6 liter, uh, making around 250 horsepower. It must have been turbocharged to make that much power, and it was either rolling on 14 or 15 inch wheels. I'm going to assume it was all wheel drive, although I don't know for sure. Okay, let's see what CM's did here. So CM's has wheels specific to this car. They do match a lot of the photos I was looking at. Uh, no lug nut details though, which is pretty weak. Uh, I can clearly see lug nuts in the photographs, but I don't know why they wouldn't have like either studs or depressions there. When they could easily mold that detail, they could easily mold a lug nut. Now these tires aren't bad. Uh, there's some curvature, and then the tread blocks aren't... They're definitely pronounced, but for a rally car, it seems like it's okay. It has uh, plastic mud guards here. They must be plastic because they are so thick. And one great thing about this brand, Tampo printing. No decal BS. Uh, I'm really starting to despise decals because they crack off. And uh, I've asked other people in my review of a different model. If you guys are reviewing models and you see decals, complain about it. We need to get the word out to the manufacturers like Inno 64 and Tarmac that decals are horrible because it means your collectible might be a disaster in 10, 20 years when the thing hardens and cracks off. The CM's looking good. You know what? Actually, let me look back at that box. How old is this model? All right, this model is from 2007, so it's over 10 years old, uh, 15 years old. And it still looks pretty decent because there are no decals. And the paint actually hasn't bubbled yet, but I wouldn't be surprised if it does somewhere else. So great, great printing. 
loving it. Some black paint here for the window molding. It's a little thick, but whatever. This is a different time of die cast. Nice that it has the clear lights here. You know, orange and clear separation is good. There's black paint in these two, well, at least this grill indentation. This one might just be smooth and painted black. The license plate matches up, so that's great. Orange paint for these, uh, I don't know if they're reflectors or turn signals. This actually has a molded grill and is painted black. There seems to be some silver printed on uh, hood latches. Yeah, the Rally Monte Carlo thing here looks pretty nice. The banner is also tampo printed. The windshield wiper blades are raised, painted black. Up top, I think these might be airports to cool down the cabin. And then the Mazda printing, all this stuff up here is tampo printed. So on this side here, it looks just as good as the other side. But now we have a fuel filler door right here. Oh, wait a second. Oh, that's quite interesting. There's physically a box right here. But look. So, and I see that on that grainy second photo I pulled up. So maybe this doesn't actually work on the real rally car and they moved the fuel filler up here because it's probably a totally different fuel tank inside of this this thing. All right, well, going to the rear lights. Now this is a bit of a weird. These look way too tall. Let's just let's look at this again. First, there's that fuel filler thing. This is like this white vertical here. This, there's almost no, there is no white vertical here. The tail light literally runs into the bumper. So these tail lights are not accurate. They're just way too tall. I'm not sure why they would design it that way. I mean, anyone looking at that photo knows there's something wrong here. And there's no reason financially why you would want to make this bigger. Right? The casting is the casting, so uh, really strange. Oh well, at least uh, the separation of the colors is good, red, orange, and the white backup, so... But yeah, definitely not a very accurate rear end on this thing. A little blanked off exhaust to painted silver. This is a tab holding the back. Interesting. I guess, uh, and also that's a bit off. Uh, the rear photo doesn't even have this depression. It's just a clear bumper all the way across. Although I don't know what year it does say monte carlo on it though that is the number 14 car so this is not accurate to the real race car this indentation so that's too bad so this whole rear end is just wrong sadly but we do have this little low wing and it is actually passing air so that's kind of nice and then we have this monte carlo badge tampo printed not a decal so that's good and then we actually have a full spare tire of the same molding as the outside and the tire looks the same as well so now let's see if we can see any more of this interior let me get a flashlight well there's that tire you got a silver roll cage in there you have uh, the shifter and the steering wheel they're okay no additional color though um, Racing seats. What's going on in that instrument cluster? Is there like a rectangle there? I think it's just molded in. I don't think it's a graphic or is it? I can't tell. Any harnesses? Sometimes these CMs have harnesses. I don't see any though. Nope. This, pl this plastic is very cloudy or something. I'm not sure if this is displayed by the previous owner. Maybe they polished that window, but you can see all the scratches, right? Maybe they took a rag to it and, you know, that's what scratched it. Okay, well, for the original price of 735 yen, it's, it's fully, it's good. I'm just really happy that the thing looks nice. I don't actually see any paint rash. Did, did you guys see any? I'm looking at it now with my own eyes, not through the camera. 
Let me just hit focus though. And it's pretty good. Maybe right here. It's either a contaminant or maybe some paint rash, but all in all, it's pretty nice. And yeah, for you guys that care, this thing does roll. CMs is weird though. They take no credit for any of the work that they did. They don't tell you what the car is, when it was made, who made it, whatever, right? It's just strange. And then they're all pressed fit together, so modding them, fixing problems would be difficult. You will notice these tires are winter tires. They're very narrow. So they actually paid attention to that detail because the race in this year in Monte Carlo, it was snowing. So they're trying to, they use thinner tires to get through the, the snow and get to the tar or the dirt, you know, for better traction. So that's good, good accuracy. It looks a little goofy, but uh, it is accurate. So that's really neat. Let me get a couple other models out here. So the first one we're going to pull out is the other 323 GTX I have from this brand and this is from the 1991, I'm going to assume, Swedish Rally. Yes, it says so on the, the hood. So it's definitely a different 323. It's a little bit more voluptuous, or not voluptuous, rounded, less angular. And CMs did a great job on that one too. Hmm. I think this one might have more normal tires. Yeah, these are actually wide tires, so tarmac tires. Very cool. Same general paint livery. So here's a 1985 Peugeot 205 rally car from the same brand of CMs, and there's a good chance that actually won that championship that year, or at least that race. That says uh, Monte Carlo on it as well. I'm going to do one more CMs. This is a 2004 Ignis 1600. Just a more modern hot hatch, if you will. Although a 1600, by modern standards, not very powerful. So you'll notice the antennae. These two are very thin, these two are very thick, and this one is bent because my shelf is too low. So if you do buy these, be mindful that these antennae are really easy to break off. But if you have some black plastic from a model kit you take a lighter to it you stretch it out you can make a brand new antenna in like five seconds and you just use some school glue and pop it in there so for me at least it's not a bothersome i have a video on how to do that in my tutorial playlist all right so let's mix up the brand here we have a shuko of a 1980 uh Volkswagen Rabbit or Golf, depending on what country you're in. And this is also from the Monte Carlo race. Although I don't know what year. I guess it'd be the 1980 Monte Carlo. And my notes say this came in 36th place because it's, you know, it's competing against factory race cars, probably Group B race cars as well. I don't know when Group B racing ended, but it was past 1980. I think it was like 86 or something. And one streetcar, another hot hatch or something looking like a hot hatch would be by BM Creations of a 1988 Toyota Starlet. And BM Creations, if you don't know, they have these secondary wheels and you can also raise and lower the suspension. You have to take it apart to do so, but uh, it gives options, you know. So for me, I have the aftermarket wheels and it slammed to the ground. And you can also steer the wheels, so if you like taking photos of your stuff, it gives you some uh, more dynamic posing. So if you like rally cars, CMs is still a good brand. I am happy that newer brands like Shuko and Tarmac and Inno and now Mini GT are coming out with rare you know rally cars so because these CMs are quite expensive now some of them less so like maybe these but the winners and stuff like that would probably be expensive but sooner or later someone will come back and do this in the modern modern brand but uh, for now I'm quite happy because these hold up against the test of time I think they're still well detailed with all the you know details duh uh, enough rambling, so I guess it's this one.
and let's pull out the snow coaster. You also note here the thinness of the tires here. Definitely not as wide as one would assume. So I'm very happy again, and uh, no quality problems here, no paint rash. So Tampo Printing, if uh, if Hot Wheels can do it, I don't know why these expensive brands don't. Laziness, cheap, I don't know what the deal is. But CMs did it right. Whoever founded that company, please come back. You guys, you guys should, should come back and and help out the hobby because you knew what you were doing. Thanks for watching, guys. I will see you the next time we talk about a rally car.